Hello again, friends, colleagues, cybersecurity enthusiasts, early professionals, students, mentees, and everybody else that's been listening in and watching me on YouTube. This is the Cybersecurity Graybeard, self-described again. I want to talk about additional technologies. This is the third part in the series that I've been running on cybersecurity technologies and jobs that are associated with them. After this episode, I'm going to take a little break from this path of technologies and I'm going to get into some specifics about building out an infrastructure and an architecture. I had an individual reach out to me directly and ask for uh, some guidance in that area and I think it's a wonderful idea and after 15 of these technologies I'll take a break and move down that path. Um, so again, I wanted to uh, thank everybody for listening and watching and if you could share out on your social media uh, about me, Cybersecurity Graybeard, I'd appreciate it. Feel free to check out my website at cybergraybeard.com and also feel free to email me any questions or if you have any needs or anything I can do to help you out, uh, please feel free to do so at cybergraybeard at gmail.com. So with all that marketing out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the thick of things with the technology. Today I'm going to talk about web application firewalls forensics, identity and access management, intrusion detection systems, and intrusion prevention systems. So let's go ahead and get started with a web application firewall. In the early days of the internet and networking, firewalls, um, individual device that I've talked about before, pretty much was put up, it was a barrier, and people believed that was enough to keep them safe. And in a lot of instances it was and is. However, now with the growth of the World Wide Web, which is not the internet. The World Wide Web is a piece of the internet. The World Wide Web runs on a protocol, HTTP, Hypertext Transport Protocol, runs on port 80 or 8080. Uh, when you secure it, it runs on 443 for SSL. Uh, those are part of the OSI model that many of you are probably studying or will study, so it'll make more sense then. Uh, layers three and layers four, uh, ports, protocols. So with the web application firewall, we need to protect these web servers because it's propagated so much. There's just billions and billions of dollars in e-commerce and organizations are putting up systems on the web and an individual firewall that's really looking more for networking traffic doesn't have the capability or the focus to protect these environments. So I'm going to go ahead and make a quote here, give you a quote, not make it, but read it. Internet facing web applications make up a large part of the attack surface and are where attackers are focusing their attention. According to Verizon's data in 2014, 35% of breaches were caused by web application attacks, making it the most prevalent attack pattern. Granted, that was five years ago, uh, and it was the breach investigations, according to Verizon, uh, and that source comes from Tom Smith, uh, an article that he put out, over 80% of breaches, still the result of poor patch management. I believe some of you have heard me speak about the Equifax breach, which was a perfect example of this. The very recent 2019, I think it was June, Capital One was a breach because of this. Web application firewalls are critical components that need to be monitored, managed, and maintained to protect the integrity and security of web servers. Individuals that work with web application firewalls, again, mostly in the networking team, you may have subsets of a networking team that are going to focus on that, uh, on that area with the web servers themselves or the web application firewalls. Other folks that need to know about this are going to be developers as well as the web server um, builders and administrators. So there's a lot of team effort here. With a regular firewall, the networking guys pretty much handle that on their own. They don't engage many other teams, but when you're talking about WAF, there's a lot more um, specifics that are involving applications, and if you make a mistake, one, you can see a serious breach, and two, you could take down a, a revenue generating system, uh, and, and most organizations can't and won't have that. So web application firewalls, again, another security component that's critical nowadays, much more so here in the last uh, five to seven years than uh, back in the early days, whereas a regular firewall has been around nearly since the inception of TCP IP. The next area that I want to talk about is forensics. This is not a technology that you necessarily go to the store and buy. It is a, a methodology. It does use certain uh, data readers to get into the memory and into certain code to dig up data that I'll talk about here momentarily. But basically, this area covers many technology families, including intrusion detection, vulnerability scanning, threat hunting, and others. The idea behind forensics, and not a lot of organizations have dedicated forensic analysts. This is something that they'll go out to organizations like um, IBM has it with their IRIS program. Uh, you have, I think, uh, Cyber 
Uh, there's there's other vendors out there that do this. It'll come to me shortly. It's early on a Monday morning, so forgive my slow brain. Um, CrowdStrike, there it is. CrowdStrike's another one. Um, th there's all kinds. I think FireEye, FireEye does it as well. There's a lot of forensic analyst organ or analysis organizations out there. These are the people that are called in usually after a breach. There is forensic analysis ahead of time when you're doing threat hunting, for example. If you have a threat hunter that's doing an analysis, they see a strange behavior on the system. They may want to take the system and do some memory dumps. Or if a computer is getting a lot of uh, GPS, global protection faults, blue screen of death for the Windows users, then the analysts, uh, the forensic analysts, uh, analysts will go in and basically debug the code and go and find out what's happening. That's forensic analysis. Getting into the goo, as I like to say, where you're really trying to figure out what is causing that general protection fault, or you were breached, you had an incident, where did it start? Tracking back what system, kind of ground zero. Uh, if you've ever seen, a, I think it was um, there's a movie back in the 80s about a monkey a outbreak. It's called Outbreak. There we go. So Monday morning speeding up for me. Uh, so an Outbreak, they needed to find Ground Zero, the, the first monkey that was bitten, uh, if you will, so they can go ahead and figure out where it all started. That's what forensic analysts do. These are highly skilled, deep individuals. I don't believe you go to school for this. This is the kind of thing you need to learn hands-on and really get into it to figure it out. So forensics is something that tier three and above, if you really want to get into it, you want to understand, then learning how to code, uh, how to do memory dumps and reads, those are the technologies you're going to want to get into. Again, this is heavy on the networking side, a little bit on the system administration side, but these folks are pretty much going to report directly to a CISO, a Chief Information Security Officer. So that is a, a higher end uh, task. The next of the five, my third, is identity and access management. This is an entire profession. Uh, identity and access management, it's not something you do once and forget about. It's an ongoing process, a critical part of your infrastructure that demands continuous management, and that comes from a Dell EMC white paper. There's all kinds of organizations that do identity and access management. You have... Um, uh, Code 42, I believe, does some. Um, they really do a lot of backup and recovery. Uh, you're going to have this with Okta. Um, Ping ID, I believe, also does it. Um, IBM, I think, has some identity and access management. Many, many organizations focus on this. It's helping organizations understand who has access to what, where they're going, limiting the access, tracking the access, privilege access management, making sure that you have honorable admins and that you are watching the watchers. Identity and access managers are in their own group. Sometimes they're going to overlap in smaller companies with the system administrators. I've seen that actually in medium to larger scale hospitals as well. This is really a, spe a specialty that should end up with a specific subset of IT professionals. It is an up and coming technology. Uh, I talked previously about multi-factor authentication. I am and, and um, MFA go hand in hand. So if you're interested in one, you're gonna be dealing with the other. Uh, a very good way to get into IT and into cybersecurity is with identity and access management. The last two, intrusion prevention and intrusion detection, I'm gonna bring into one. Intrusion prevention is what it says. Let's prevent somebody from coming into the environment and an intrusion detection is, uh-oh, somebody got in, let's figure out what they're doing. Some people argue with me and say that intrusion detection comes before intrusion prevention. I argue that if you've prevented it, you don't need to detect it. Detecting is once they get on the other side. If you follow American football, once they get into the backfield, you need to have your safeties that are going to tackle them and your cornerbacks because they got beyond the defensive line. So I'm saying that the, the safety, they're the intrusion detection. Your intrusion prevention is your offensive or your defensive line. You tackle the guy at the, at the uh, line of scrimmage, you don't need to detect him in the backfield. So uh, for those of you that like American football, there's my, my cute little analogy. Um, with intrusion detection, a system can monitor a network for any kind of abusive abnormal or malicious activity. It keeps logs of a single malicious abusive activity. The logs are important to security professionals to take any steps um, to set any rules against these activities. And those logs are reviewed by the forensic analysts that I previously talked about. And that quote comes from the advantages of an intrusion detection system by an organization called UK Essays, and they are obviously out of the United Kingdom. So feel free to check them out as well. So with the intrusion prevention, I would say that a firewall is intrusion prevention, but you have individual devices. Cisco makes them. I believe Barracuda makes them. Um, Alien Vault may as well. 
Uh, check me on that one. I'm not entirely sure. But there are numerous vendors out there that make systems that are looking for intrusions as they come in. They have signatures. This is what an intrusion looks like, this type of behavior. And the signature is going to go ahead and let them know that there is a potential breach. Um, back in the early Nine, the early zeros, 0405. Um, I took a course on um, NIDS and SIDS, computer intrusion detection systems, and um, network intrusion detection systems. You have HIDS, host intrusion detection systems from Cisco. Very good course. Um, I was a network engineer at the time. So both the IDS and IPS are heavy, heavy, heavy hitters with network engineering. As I said in one of my early uh, cybersecurity graybeard talks, Understanding networks is critical to understanding cybersecurity. And as you've you heard, as you've now heard me talk about 15 different technologies, the majority of them focus around networks. Getting into networking, understanding routing, understanding DNS, understanding Ethernet and fiber, OSI model, how this all ties together really gives you an extreme foundation for getting into and maintaining a strong cybersecurity profession. So again, real quick today, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, identity and access management, which falls more under sysadmin, forensics, tier three, tier four, for getting into the goo, and a web application firewall dealing with the firewalls around the web servers, not so much on the networking. So these three, the WAF, the forensics, and IAM, outside of networking per se, IDS and IPS, heavy, heavy, heavy hitters in networking. Again, I'm the Cybersecurity Graybeard. I really appreciate you listening. Uh, feel free to reach out, cybergraybeard at gmail.com. And I'll be back in probably 10 days to two weeks. I have a trip overseas, and uh, I'll be checking my email. And I really look forward to hearing from you. It's always fun seeing what you have to say. Send me questions, cybergraybeard at gmail.com, and have a great week. Bye-bye.